the greatest story of the day we haven't even touched on. And that is our sitting vice president. She's so smart. She's so clever. She's so good at figuring things out. Like one of the things she figured out at a campaign event on Monday is how amazing Gen Z is. You know, they take a lot of, a lot of guff from us Gen Xers and those in between. Uh, she loves Gen Z and she wants you to as well. And here's why, SOT17. I see our college students up there. <laughs> and let me just tell you, I love Gen Z. I don't know if some, you know, I love Gen Z. <laughs> so, okay, for the older adults, this is gonna be a humbling thing I'm about to share with you. If someone is 18 years old today, they were born in 2005. <laughs> oh yeah, check that out. What? Think about that for a minute. <laughs> Dave. Hold on, I'm thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can we use calculators? Sorry. Yeah. No, 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 I thought about it. it, it the math is correct, yes. Oh. I'm still checking. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Dave. Yeah. Uh, she's a, she is hilarious. What, what, what a strange figure in our, in our yeah. politics. What a strange figure. So that, like, her attempted profundities always get to me. I love them. That one, she was... Oh, this is going to blow your mind. <laughs> it's going to blow your mind. But she actually took a shot uh, at being a little bit more profound uh, in celebration of MLK uh, at her at this event in Columbia, South Carolina. And she busted out like her favorite line. It's the most absurd. She says it all the time. You would think her speech writers would say, Madam, you've said that too many times. Nobody knows what the F you're talking about. But she keeps saying it over and over in SOT 16, listen for yourself. Today, we celebrate the legacy of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., a visionary who saw what could be unburdened oh God. by what had been. Oh, no. Oh, cringe, cringe. I'll just take you back, just to, and then I'll give it to you guys, but just take a listen. We just put together a quick one, SOT 27. Examples. I can imagine what can be and be unburdened by what has been, you know? What oh can God. be unburdened by what has been? What can be unburdened by what has been? What can be unburdened by what has been? <laughs> what can be unburdened by what has been? What we can see, what we believe can be unburdened by what has been. What can be unburdened by what has been. What can be unburdened by what has been. Is she done? The <laughs> RNC actually put that together. Is she done? I can't, like, there's nothing in it. She's an empty vessel. She is an empty mm -hmm. vessel. She has no profundities to offer, and it's very clear to all of us, and she could very well be our next president if Joe Biden gets reelected. Stu? <laughs> Look, I, I, I don't know if that's fair. I, I really see her more as uh, uh, she's seeing what can be and is unburdened by what has been, Megan. And I think that's <laughs> really the deep. It's fascinating to watch her. Uh, she's unburdened by by everything except the mask that she's wearing in the last clip, which is fascinating she's to watch. Unburdened by intelligence. Yes, unburdened by intelligence. A shame, embarrassment. I mean, the only thing she said more than than the unburdened line is her love for yellow school buses and electric school and the Venn buses. Diagram. She does, and the Venn diagram. Those, there, like, there's three things she says. She's got three <laughs> tracks on the CD and she's hitting random at every speech. It is a bizarre thing. And I, you know, she, I love that, particularly the first clip in that montage where she just has this like unburdened by what it's been. You know, she has right. that like, I, it's just so simple. And like, can you believe I came up with it? She is a, a, a strange figure. And oddly enough, really nobody's won over by it. I, I don't know how she yes. has this job. She was a complete failure in the primary. She has unlikability uh, ratings that are, you know, that borderline like dead fish on the sidewalk. Nobody seems to like uh, Kamala Harris at all. And, you know, you're right. She probably would be very difficult to avoid if if for some reason they made a change or she was going to run in the, the next time, because how do you how do you change and avoid 
the person of color that is uh, your VP. But man, I don't even think, you know, Democrats don't even like her. Nobody defends her. She's just seemingly a-, a Well, but Joe Biden, she I is, mean, she is a burden the odds of him making it five more years. That, that My point is simply the odds of him making it five more years if he gets reelected are very slim based on Low. the way he's performing right now. So she would take over. I don't, I don't think anybody would actually voluntarily elect her as president, but she could get in there if that happens. She, the, the, the problem with Kamala Harris, many, many, many problems. She really is unburdened by a high IQ, Dave. It's obvious to anybody who watches her for two minutes. But not only is she, does she not appear to be very sharp, she, she's a race provocateur. She's Joy Reid in a different suit. And we see it regularly. Now, the, the one group that Joe Biden continues to perform well with and that the Democrats are extremely dependent on for votes are black women. He's losing black men to Trump, like overwhelmingly now in the latest polls in a way we've never seen before. We'll see whether that holds on the actual election day. But Trump's doing better with black men than any Republican ever has. And Biden's hemorrhaging them, but not black women. And so he cannot eject the black woman who has been on the ticket with him in any way that would work and maintain his presidency or, you know, re get reelected. So of course not. one as, of the things- as, as, Yeah, go ahead. No, I was gonna say, you know, as Fannie Willis uh, explained to us, we can't expect black women to be perfect, right? Right, right. That's I mean, a it's, standard. It's, 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 exactly the, it's exactly the same thing. So so no, she, she can't be abandoned for, for that very reason, of course. Um, so, but the other thing she does is she pokes the racial bear all the time. Mm -hmm. You can take it to the bank. She remember after those Tennessee lawmakers went out onto the floor and threw their fit because they weren't getting the exact debate they wanted. She went down there to hail them as heroes after Jacob Blake um, tried, he pulled a knife on cops and got sh shot. She went out there at his hospital bed after he had abused police officers, resisted arrest and assaulted them, calling him a hero. She weighed in and retweeted the, you know, help support the BLM people who were arrested after the riots. Anytime there's a racial dispute, she's the first to stoke the fires. And that brings me to what she did at, in Columbia, South Carolina on this Martin Luther King Day speech she gave where she had the nerve to bring up the following example when she's talking about some of the racial strife in the history of America. Listen to what she adds on in SOT 15. Generation after generation, on the fields of Gettysburg, in the schools of Little Rock, on the grounds of this state house, on the streets of Ferguson, and on the floor of the Tennessee House of Representatives, we the people have always fought to make the promise of freedom real. Streets of Ferguson, Dave. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's incredibly disrespectful to the soldiers who lost their lives at, at Gettysburg and, and, and throughout the Civil War, but nobody cares about that, right? I mean, th that doesn't matter. That, that, that wasn't a debt paid. That, that, that was apparently something else. Um, this is part of what makes her rhetoric about unburdening ourselves from the past uh, not only deeply stupid, but really menacing and dangerous. Because what she means by that is tearing down statues. What she means by that is rewriting history. What she means by that is abandoning everything that America has ever stood for and ignoring that in the hopes of some pie in the sky equity that nobody can even actually explain or, or you know, tell us how it would work. And you know, that's dangerous. I, it, it, with all the political news, it went a little bit under the radar. But, you know, last week or the week before, uh, I, I was heartened by the fact that when the Biden administration tried to take down that William Penn statue, there was so much blowback yeah. that the Democrat governor of Pennsylvania, Josh Shapiro, called the administration and said, hey, you can't do that, right? No chance in hell that would have happened in 2020. Absolutely none. That statue would have been gone the next day. I so, remember you at the Natural well, History Museum. I, I absolutely was. And I'm I, I'm still sad that that statue isn't there. I mean, New Yorkers Teddy love Roosevelt. that statue. No, nobody asked them. Th there was no referendum. And, and nobody was offended by the Teddy Roosevelt statue, except for some lefty idiots on some committee somewhere. So, I mean, it's it's ridiculous. And, and Kamala Harris really is, uh, you know, the, the, the platonic ideal 
uh, of all this nonsense. And if she had our, if she had her druthers, she would unburden us from the past. We would, we would know nothing about the actual past of the United States. That is her goal. It's amazing that she has the nerve to bring up Ferguson in the same breath. I mean, 50,000 people died at Gettysburg, but okay, it's the same thing. Ferguson is not some civil rights example now. Ferguson is where they had riots after a black man, Michael Brown, was shot to death by a white cop whom Michael Brown had already gone after and was in the process of charging. That's what happened when he got shot, according to the five black eyewitnesses that our black attorney general, Eric Holder's DOJ interviewed. That's what happened in Ferguson when they cleared the officer and said that this was Michael Brown's fault, not the fault. That's what led to riots because we had a complicit media that didn't tell the truth. And we had a, a Barack Obama presidency in which racial tensions had been inflamed already. And now she has the nerve to raise it, Stu, and compare it to Little Rock, never mind those morons on the floor of the Tennessee legislature? Well, none of that matters. There's way too many facts, Megan, to, for this debate. It's all supposed to be about emotion and oppression and these predetermined categories of people that we're supposed to judge based on their skin color. Um, you know, and I, I honestly, I, I keep coming back to this and I don't know that it's going to work out. Seems like nothing ever works out sometimes, but it does feel like an incredible opportunity for conservatives and those on the right. You know, for a hundred years, rightly, Republicans were very closely associated with racial justice in so many different ways. And through the 60s and you know, I don't know till what period, the, the left was able to sort of successfully in the public mind wrestle that away. And I think, you know, the at the time, the idea was, well, we shouldn't be judging people based on their immutable characteristics. It would be ridiculous to judge people based on their eye color. Why would we do it on their skin color? And so there was that was a concept that I think most people all agreed with. And Republicans were constantly always on the defensive saying, no, I swear, we don't we don't want to judge people based on skin color. We don't do that. And they were trying they were constantly defending themselves from those accusations. And then along came the Ibram X. Kendi's of the world and the Kamala Harris's of the world and the Joy Reid's of the world who have handed on a silver platter this idea that now they're going to be the ones that are judging people based on skin color. They are handing this issue to conservatives and conservatives agree with the vast majority of people on this issue that people should be judged by the content of their character, not by the color of their skin. True or false, using your tax refund to pay off credit card debt is smart. False. Well, donewithdebt.com published a strategy designed to let you keep your hard-earned tax refund and reduce or eliminate credit card debt. Most Americans owe thousands in credit card debt that will take years to pay off, if at all. Done with debt? Found that filing bankruptcy is usually not the answer, and taking out loans to pay off credit cards usually increases debt. When you engage Done With Debt, their legal experts and skilled negotiators will take on the credit card companies for you. Their winning strategies are designed with one goal, solve your debt situation quickly and permanently. First things first, chat with a Done With Debt strategist and explore your possible solutions. That Just that will make you feel better. Some debt fighting strategies though are time sensitive, so you do need to move quickly. Call right away, check it out now. For a free consultation, visit done, D-O-N-E, with debt, D-E-B-T dot com. Done with debt dot com. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.